Hi, my name is Dallas Hogue. I'm one of the technicians with the Royal Automation Solutions Group. And today we'd like to talk about setting up uh, a RS-232 driver to communicate with one of our commonly used controllers, the Micrologix 1400. This uh, serial driver is often uh, confusing for people to set up. I'm using a computer, and in today's world, they don't tend to come with RS-232 serial ports built in. So we're going to be using this uh, USB to serial adapter to make that happen. When I do this, I'm going to go ahead and plug this into my USB serial port. The one thing I will need to know is what COM port this is using. To find that out, I can go to my and into my uh, device manager. And if I find my ports uh, tab here, notice my USB uh, port is set for COM3 that we'll be using today. Once I know that much, that's really all I need to know from a hardware standpoint. So I have the serial cable plugged into channel 0, the serial port on our Micrologix 1400. And I'm going to go ahead and make that connection. So now we're cabled up and, and ready to go once we know our COM port. The software that we use to add drivers and communicate with our uh, products is called RS Links. This is a product from Rockwell Software that's an OPC server uh, for uh, the Rockwell hardware. So I'm going to launch that by going to All Programs. I'm going to find my Rockwell Software folder and the program RS Links and launch RS Links Classic. So when the window comes up, we can see that uh, the first time configuration here, it's showing the Lynx Gateway Ethernet driver, which really is, is nothing at the moment. It's just a default driver that comes up. So we have nothing linked up to it. We are cabled up and connected to the serial port of our uh, Micrologix 1400. If I go into, uh, using the little toolbar here on the menu, uh, the Configure Drivers window, I, I can select the drivers I want to use to talk to anything Rockwell. So you notice there's a rather long list of things here. The, for what we're going to be doing, we want to use the RS-232 DF1 Devices driver. So if I simply point to that, and click on it, press the Add New button, it suggests using this name. We'll go with the default name that it's suggesting. I'm going to click OK. And once we come up here, I can see the window that uh, we have to set. Now, serial communications isn't uh, a difficult thing, but there's a lot of different combinations. Notice the things we have on the list, several different choices for COM ports that we need to set. We know ours is set to COM3, so I'm going to go ahead and make that setting right now. The device several different possible devices on this list. So we're going to leave everything at the defaults here. And just to point out that we are using uh, the, the default setting of the PLC channel 0, which would be a serial port on a PLC 5. We have the error checking is set for BCC. The baud rate is set for 19.2. Just for fun, we'll go ahead and change the baud rate to 9600 here and work with that. Uh, these are all of the settings that you would normally see when you come uh, hook this up and create this driver out of the box. Now you can see there could be uh, an awful lot of different possible combinations that we could use here. But being cabled up to this allows us to take advantage of a great wonderful tool here called Auto Configure. If I just now click on the only thing I really had to know and set here was what COM port I'm using. I'm going to click on that Auto Configure button, and sure enough, after it makes a few tests, it's testing all these different possible combinations for us. 
you can see that it came back with this great message that says auto configuration successful. That's the kind of message I like to see. Notice it changed the device to an SLC CH0, that would be the uh, serial port on a SLC 500, or for a Micrologix product or a panel view product. The error checking was changed to CRC and it found the right baud rate at 19200. At this point, all I have to do is click OK. Notice it tells me that I have my driver now up and running, and I can see that it added that driver on my list over here on, on RS Links. What we're looking at in RS Links here is something called the RS Who window. So if you're not seeing this uh, on, on your computer when you do this for the first time, you can simply click on this little icon and it will show you this screen. Notice as I click on them, because I have the check mark set to auto browse, I can see that the little icon is animated. I'm going to click on my newly created DF1 driver, and I can click on the plus sign, I can expand it. Notice it shows my computer set up as node 0 using COM port 3, and it is a DF1 driver. It also found my Micrologix 1400, which is, is out of the box. So I can now see that I'm up and communicating with my controller. If I were going to implement this now, I would launch RS Logix 500 software and tell it to go out and browse this particular driver, my RS-232 DF1 driver, and I could go online with the Micrologix 1400. Thanks for joining us today, and we'll be talking again soon.